Yeah, you may be looking at that and thinking, uh, there's no progress there on those two 1,500-gallon uh, builds. Well, that's because I've been living in a uh, frozen winter wonderland all this week where it has uh, snowed multiple times, and I think the high temperature has been about uh, 12 degrees. So, yeah, working out here, not that good. So what do you think? They uh, look pretty established. You want to see if they're interested in some food? Yep. That seems like uh, at least the big boy was interested. And there's little Oscar, he's checking out a piece. <laughs> I think he's waiting for the big boys to uh, get their fill. Oh, there's the other little, oh, there we go. They're both munching down, awesome. Going back for a second or third piece. Obviously, uh, the big pig here has a mouthful. <laughs> I couldn't tell if the other peacock bass got his piece or not. Uh, and there you go, right there is why I want to have the plecos, because that is all pleco food falling to the bottom. that I don't want breaking down in my aquarium. That I want to be, be consumed by uh, this guy. The guy burping out all the food. Hey, there we go. The other guys are cleaning up after him. That's always helpful. But uh, <clears throat> I can't depend on these guys to clean up after the pig here. So there are there are uh, bottom feeders coming. There are, pe there are fish that are going to make up uh you're gonna eat up all that uh that mess that gets to the bottom so while i may not be able to get started on the uh double 1500 gallon builds yet uh there's still plenty to do yeah that's predator bay 3000 behind me there's a ton of work to do on that i gotta get all those rocks and wood and sand out of there i gotta get it all cleaned up and uh you know i think i need to make a few improvements to it before i set it back up we gotta get it shark ready so i'm thinking uh, maybe some more drains, maybe some more water flow, maybe uh, set up like an external uh, skimmer reservoir. A lot of cool stuff we're going to do that. Maybe switch some lightning underneath and get a giant refugium going with macro algae, maybe even some corals down there. Who knows? Uh, lots to do on that, so uh, plenty to keep me busy. And also, you know what, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to do a little double checking, a couple measurements in there in the uh, annex and see a lot of people are worried. Is the view going to be blocked uh, of the 4,500 gallon when I build those two 1,500 gallons? Well, I'm going to erect some structures in there and stand where I expected to view it from, you know, from the original plans and see, does it still work? You know, my, I mean, I know I can see the whole tank from there. It's a question of, is the angle like too narrow versus would I want to be further back and have an angle more like that? That's kind of the question, right? You don't want to build something like the 4,500 gallon and then block it, that's crazy, right? So uh, I'll take some measurements, I'll do some tests, we'll see if that still makes sense to build in that way. Uh, as, right, as they are right now, those two builds on the ground, uh, the layouts for the 1,500 gallons, they're 10 feet long, but they're uh, over five and a half feet wide because I wanted them to be five feet wide once I built the structure up. So there's some flexibility there. Maybe I need to chop off a foot or something. Maybe they need to be four and a half or four feet wide. You know, there'll still be cool tanks, you know, 10 by 4, measly 10 by 4 by 3, but, you know, we'll see. If, if that drastically improves the view of the 4,500 gallon, then that's what I'll do. If I feel that it doesn't drastically improve, you know, the view of the 4,500 gallon, well, then maybe I'll stick with uh, what we have right now. But we'll check that out later in the video. Let's check out on the uh, mini monsters that are growing out for the 4,500 gallon. I saw a couple peacock bass zip by, and of course uh, some bumblebee Oscars, and well, you can't miss the uh, arowana swimming right in front of the camera. Uh, but there's also wide bar silver dollars down in there. We have the uh, flag tail port protrolotus. <laughs> I think I said it right for once. Uh, of course, there's the beautiful albino uh, arowana, and there is tiger shovel nose. So we have a lot of really cool fish growing out, and uh, soon they'll be in the 4,500 gallon. Well, there is still a long ways to go, but there's also been a lot of progress. Uh, over here on the left side of the tank, you can see all the wood is gone and all the large rocks are gone. And unfortunately, it's like nine degrees outside right now, so I'm not going out. But when there is time, to, when it's warm enough to go out, I'm going to take those containers full of uh, uh, basically fluorite and various substrate for plants, and I'm going to pour them in a container I have outside, uh, as well as all the wood is gone. So. Half the tank is ready for the substrate part, which I'm hopefully going to be enlisting a buddy or my uh, nephew 
to assist with. And as you can see, I still have the uh, right side of the tank to go as far as taking out the big rocks. Uh, so I've already filled up a couple of trash cans, so I'm going to need to get another one. And probably some more wheels too. I need to, I'm using my dolly right there, but I need to get uh, some more uh, like trash can wheels for that. And uh, I will get all of these rocks out of this side of the aquarium. But you can see that all of the, uh, the wood is gone. Now the interesting thing is, way back when, I put two cactus plecos in here and uh, two, I think I said gold nugget plecos before, but I meant green phantoms. And so I got two giant uh, cactus plecos out of here. I got two giant green phantom plecos out of here. But I've also been pulling out, I don't know if, uh, well you can see I'm sort of sloshing around, but a bunch of smaller cactus plecos. I think I've got eight of them so far. So <laughs> apparently cactus plecos, even with big cichlids, can breed in a 3,000 gallon because I got a bunch of big cactus plecos now, which is awesome. And uh, the baby guys, they're going to get a new home. They're going to go into the uh, discus aquarium because I have new plans for the 4,500 uh, for plecos that are going to go in there. I was just thinking to myself, it's uh, during these stages of builds or uh, converting tanks from freshwater salt water that really test your metal, whether you, whether you really want to keep sharks and big uh, cichlids and bass or not. This is definitely, uh, we have to prove your worth. Man, a lot of work, but uh, you know, I just came off building that 4,500 gallon and I know that after a lot of work comes a lot of happiness. All right, a lot of people are worried about the new tanks going in the front, blocking the view of the aquarium. Well, if you're standing back in the doorway into the room, as we can see, it'll, these will definitely be blocking the view of the aquarium. But the whole plan was from this large middle area to have the aquarium visible clearly in this area. Now, obviously the camera, I don't have a wide angle lens on here, so the human eye where I'm standing, there's a perfect view of the whole tank, and it's far enough back where the angle is like this, it's not, super wide angle so this is good but this is actually after a modification a lot of you guys were concerned about it and I have a lot of good people who watch these videos who have a lot of aquarium experience and just a good head on their shoulders and so I take it seriously when a lot of people mention the same thing I'm like you know what let me double check because it wasn't like I didn't see is there enough room here to, to properly view the tank and everything before I decided on having these tanks be five and a half feet wide but the reality of it is, is once I did some mock-ups here with the wood, when I put it all the way on the end here to simulate the tank being built at five and a half feet, it really did actually impair a lot of the angles. I could still see the aquarium sitting here, but rather than having a nice sort of on angle like that, it was very, very stretched, very, you know, wide angle sort of thing with the, with the human eye, you know, it wasn't really as comfortable viewing experience. So I said, all right, let me mock it up. Let me cut off a foot and a half. So we'll make these tanks four feet wide. And so I mocked that up. And then I stood there and I thought, oh, wow, that is, you know, that is way better. <laughs> you know, that just, you know what? I mean, it's still a 10 by four tank, you know, for these. Uh, it's not going to be 1,500 gallons anymore, but it's still going to be a good sized tank. And the important thing is it's not going to, uh, prevent me from doing what I wanted to do with the tank. That's the key thing. It doesn't matter what size anything is if, if, if it doesn't fit what you're trying to do with the tank. So I will be making modifications. So once again, uh, you know, I thank you guys many times and I thank you again for all the great input that I get uh, in the comment section, all the back and forth we have. I enjoy the hell out of it. I'm glad that most people who watch my channel are aquarium hobbyists and they're into this like I am. Uh, that's the reason I started making the videos. I love going back and forth with you guys talking about all this stuff and uh, thanks to your input, we're gonna fix this before a problem ever occurred. So the 10 by five and a half are gonna be cut down to 10 by four. So on each of these, and we're gonna have a really, really nice viewing area for the 4500 because the last thing I or anybody would ever wanna do would be put all this time and effort into this beast over here and then, you know, not be able to fully enjoy it. So, because just look at that guy. Who doesn't wanna see him every day? Those photos, man. All right, two more containers uh, filled up with big rocks. And of course, we've got a big container full of uh, fluorite, uh, plant substrate, and plenty of plant baskets. So uh, yeah, I'm good to go on some future builds. And of course, we've got a big tub full of wood. Lots of big pieces of wood, which will be awesome for future upcoming scapes. 
And of course, more big rocks. <laughs> I have no shortage of big rocks. But you know what? Now that I think about it, with a 750 gallon going African cichlid, yeah, maybe I can use up those rocks. Cool. So we're taking a look at the 220 gallon uh, discus aquarium because I moved a couple of fish from the 3000 in here and as you can see there <laughs> there's a pretty big pleco and the funny thing is is uh, I put two cactus plecos in the 3000 gallon and I pulled out eight. <laughs> two of them are big and two of them are like that guy. They're still kind of big but not as big as the uh, the parents so that's uh, Apparently, uh, I had a male and a female because I got six of those guys, <laughs> and I wanted to be able to see a couple of them, so I put them in the uh, discus aquarium, as well as, uh, I guess I put them in there, I don't really remember, but uh, I pulled out two big green phantom plecos, biggest ones I've ever seen. They're in here, and I saw one in the cave, There doesn't want to come out right now, but I'll get, a, I'll get them on video at some point, because uh, they are pretty awesome looking, but uh, hey, who doesn't like free fish, right? So I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'd like to take one more look at the uh, 4500 gallon in this video. Just, I never get tired of watching this tank, and uh, I think a lot of you feel the same way I do. Just uh, how majestic these fish are, and uh, how well they fit this aquarium. I mean, just just watching the uh, the way they move around in uh, the 4500 versus uh, kind of standard size aquariums. It's just so nice to see the uh, the big boys in a habitat that uh, that really fits them. And make them, I guess I should say, uh, act more like they would in, in, in nature, I guess, you know, in, in their movements and in their interactions with each other. Um, obviously, I'm super stoked that the, uh, the small Oscars fit right in with the group and uh, that there's no aggression between any of the fish. And obviously, the, even though I didn't really feel like there'd be any problems, you know, with uh, cycling this tank with these guys, uh, it is nice to know that there was zero issues. The amount of plants I had in there just, you know, absolutely decimated any ammonia or uh, nitrite or anything these guys could produce. Uh, the system was able to break it down really quickly. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just been awesome sitting back, watching this tank. Sometimes when I'm supposed to be cleaning out big heavy rocks out of Predator Bay 3000, I'm like, oh, let me take a break and go check out the 4500 gallon, <laughs> you know. I can't help it. I mean, can you blame me? I mean, just look at these guys. Who wouldn't want to sit in front of enjoy this aquarium? But, uh... It's one of those rare times, too, that with uh, big cichlids, I actually have the situation where the tank is too understocked. You know, you don't hear about, you don't see that too often. You know, normally it's the 180 gallon that's wall to wall with massive fish. So it is kind of cool to see uh, this stage of this build where this humongous aquarium only has this uh, small group of fish in it, you know, and just, just how much space there is between <laughs> them and like uh, open areas, just the. Uh, just the scale of the tank, you kind of see right here. It's just awesome watching the big boys be able to swim around like that. But uh, not for long, because we know we have fish coming. We're never going to overpack it, but uh, they have friends coming, and I think the tank is really going to look good once it has sort of the, the right fish load for the size of the aquarium. Pick, you know, make everything uh, sort of match up. And of course, with all the progress you saw of getting all the rocks and wood out, we have a fairly empty looking contain uh, aquarium. We have obviously the substrate to go, but uh, yeah, no more plant baskets, no more wood, no more big rocks. Uh, don't look at those rocks. <laughs> and let's check the other side. Yeah, just down to a little bit of here in the front, little pieces of wood, but for the most part, all emptied out. Predator Bay 3000 is getting closer. All right, so let's jump up top here, the 3000 gallon. Kind of really the only good way to appreciate just how massive this thing is, just how wide and long it is. Just giant open aquarium. You know, kind of perfect for sharks and rays now that I think about it. Uh, but in all seriousness, you know, getting everything cleared out of here, that's just the first step. After that, we have the overhaul of the system. And we're really overhauling everything. Let's just start from the top and work our way down. This bird's nest, the lighting, all of this is going away. Uh, there's new lights that are going in for the marine setup. They're a color temperature that's going to be better for the uh, for a saltwater aquarium. And they are going to be... Uh, basically installed in such a way that it'll be much neater and cleaner and higher up to give me plenty of room to work in there. So all new lighting, all this gets pulled out and all this gets reused on other builds. You know, you'll see all these lights in the in the new tanks. You know, um, 
The next thing is the top. So I had those big, long, over six foot wide panels going across and they sagged and uh, they would, certainly won't keep big sharks in if they push up on it, which they do, which, which is why I have the rocks on the Predator Bay over there. So we're going to put in a whole new bracing and top system so that the tops will be easier to work with, but also be stronger to keep the sharks in the tank. And then, of course, after that, water flow. So these gyre pumps, you know, things that are made for 300-gallon, 400-gallon tanks, you think, okay, I'll get a whole bunch of them and I'll put them in the 3,000 gallon and it'll work. It, it just doesn't. It's, it's on a different scale. It's just not enough water flow. So we're going to do closed loop water flow. So on both ends, we'll have uh, closed loop pumps with plumbing just shooting, you know, tens of thousands of gallons of water across this tank in, in, each, in all directions, I should say, uh, to create a lot more water flow than this aquarium ever had. And then as you can see here, we have two drains, one here and one on the far end down there that is an over-the-top drain. We're gonna get rid of both of these and we are gonna make them plumbed in drains like these two over here. So all four of our drains will be plumbed in. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix up the drains. Uh, we're gonna fix up the, the internal water flow. Uh, the return pumps I think are good to go. And then of course, let's jump down and take a look at the sump. So lastly, we are gonna completely overhaul this 21 and a half foot long sump down here. Uh, we're going to take out the basket here, the media basket, where I was catching the material and cleaning out the, uh, the filter pads. We're going to turn this into a uh, moving bed K1 sediment filter. Uh, we'll have some uh, media pads here, like the Metala mat, to keep the debris over here, and we'll siphon out the physical solids from the bottom. The K1 will help keep it there. Uh, once we go past here... Uh, this first half of the, of the sump is going to be all lit up, and this is going to be a massive refugium with macroalgae, uh, live rock, maybe even some filter-feeding corals, and, uh, and or certainly in filter-feeding invertebrates. Uh, and then the last part of the filter, all the way to the return pumps, is going to be like the current predator base setup, where it's going to have the... Uh, those uh, ceramic block uh, filter blocks, or maybe even you know live lock uh, rubble, and it'll have no light. And basically, the thought process is that most of the oxygen gets used up in this part of the aquarium, and by the time the water gets there, there's no light, there's low oxygen, and it's the perfect location for denitrifying bacteria to live. It's worked out really good in the first predator bay, so of course we're going to do it again here, and then we're going to return the water uh, back to the tank. And one thing I did add on to this tank, which I'm going to keep here, is two pumps on either side, uh, introducing oxygen. So as we're depleting the oxygen here, we're going to re-oxygenate as we return the water back to the 3,000. So it should come as no surprise uh, to anyone who watched the uh, What's Coming to the Aquarium Domain Fish Basement 2024 video that uh, there's an absolute ton of stuff going on. Obviously, the 4,500 gallon is still maturing. We're growing out the mini monsters. Of course, you know, we started Predator Bay 3000, uh, monsters undertaking, but we've made good progress so far. We're going to keep cranking away at that. Uh, we have the two new builds. They are no longer 1,500 gallon builds, uh, thanks to your guys' input. And uh, some triple checking, those are now going to be 900 gallon builds, you know, <laughs> still pretty decent sized tanks. And like I said, still big enough to do what I want to do with them, so all good. And we're going to have a perfect view of the 4500 gallon, we're going to have the two 900 gallons, and then uh, obviously we have a, a triggering effect of once those new tanks get built, uh, all the guys from the 750 move over to one of the 900 gallons. Uh, the 750 becomes a Malawi aquarium with the big boys, the peacocks and halves. Uh, once everyone from Predator Bay gets moved into Predator Bay 3000, this becomes a lagoon aquarium that opens up the uh, two tanks and the 1500 gallon marine system. So just a ton going on. Oh yeah, and we have the 600 gallon nano aquarium to build. So uh, no shortage of things to do in the fish basement 2024. And uh, I don't know if you're anywhere like me, I really want to see Predator Bay 3000 up and going. I want to see the big boy sharks in there with the new scape. I, I didn't even talk about the scape. We're just talking about the aquarium itself, but whole new scape going in there, one that's suitable for uh, five foot long sharks. It's going to be awesome. And of course, you know, so while the current Predator Bay may be getting filled up, uh, the new Predator Bay 3000, well, it's got plenty of room. So I'm thinking uh, it'd be time to pick up some friends for these guys. Hmm, more sharks, blue spot, I don't know. Lots of cool stuff out there. We'll figure it out. But uh, let's get the tank built first. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.